morning. This afternoon, uh, we have um, Pastor Shane Anderson, our new pastor at uh, Pioneer Memorial Church. Pastor Anderson uh, is coming from my alma mater, and I know if Alan Wellborn's out there, I know it's his alma mater as well, and a couple others of us around, from Shenandoah Valley Academy in New Newmarket, Virginia. And um, I've never met Pastor Anderson before until just a couple minutes ago. And those of you that have not met him as well, he, I've heard his sermons, and they're absolutely fantastic, and I hope you're coming out on Sabbath for the uh, Fall Fellowship um, weekend, and we'll have the ser uh, special service at Pioneer, and then, and then also uh, lunch together uh, outside. So, Pastor Anderson, maybe you can just share a little bit with us, uh, do, you have, do you have family with you in the area? She'll be walking in any moment, I'm sure, and she'll be thrilled that we're talking about her, too, when she comes. <laughs> yes, uh, my wife Darlene is here with me and almost here in this building. Uh, I have two daughters. I have uh, Ellie and Sierra. Uh, Sierra is a senior nursing major at Southern Adventist University, and my youngest daughter, Ellie, will be a freshman there. Uh, many have asked, ah, there she is. Wave one more time, hon. Yes, she just came in the top, yeah. That's my wife, Darlene, yeah. Uh, my youngest will be a freshman religious studies uh, major at Southern. Some have asked, uh, why isn't she coming to Andrews? And uh, my daughter, of course, was all, my oldest daughter was already at Southern uh, and didn't, you know, didn't want to interrupt her flow with her program there. And my youngest thought for probably about two seconds about transferring, but she said, my sister's at Southern, my cousins are at Southern, and 75% of my graduating class is at Southern. Mom and dad lost, so here, here, they, she, is, she is away, uh, and uh, we are here. Um, hi, you can come on down and sit if you want. You want to sit up there? Okay, she's going to sit up there. Okay. <laughs> so yes, it is the, it is the four of us. Uh, we have, oh, we do have, a, I, my daughters would want me to tell you, we do have a marvelous dog uh, named Tinsley. She is three years old. She's a rescue. Uh, she was thrown from a truck. And uh, uh, she broke her jaw in the fall when she was a little puppy, but she was caught on a security camera. And the owners of the property went out and they found her, and a few weeks later she became ours. We, had, we, we were, what do they call it? Failed, failed foster pet parents. Because we were just supposed to hold her until the actual owners got there, and then we said, oh, she's gorgeous, so we kept her. So, so we still have her. Uh, and we live, which I don't, I don't think it's a secret, uh, Dwight Nelson announced that I live just down the street from him. So I live just down the street uh, from Dwight Nelson. And every Sabbath morning, he's out there with a watch going something like this or go, go, you know. So uh, he and Karen have been very supportive, truly. They have been very supportive uh, of us coming. And uh, yeah, anything else I should mention about who I am? Or what do I like to do for fun? Uh, let's see. Uh, I like mountain biking. Uh, I like basketball. I don't know if I've, have I seen any of you out there on, on the court yet? I need, get, you get steps in. You wear this while you're playing basketball and you will have plenty of steps by the end of the evening. Uh, let's see. I like uh, amateur motorsport. Uh, that's a little bit harder to do in this part of the world. Professional motorsport, fine, but the amateur motorsport is a little bit more difficult. So, yeah, and my favorite, my all-time favorite is uh, going on trips with my family, road trips. Yeah, road trips or going to Europe or something like that. So, well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be. Well, I am just thrilled that uh, uh, Dr. Taylor has said, he said, you can go for 90 minutes, two hours, whatever you want to do. Uh, so uh, I, will, I will not do that. That would be awful that, this, this time of day. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. This does, this does feel uh, like, like home to me uh, for the last, well, since 2010 when my, when my book came out, I've traveled to various places and be able to be with educators. Uh, obviously, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pastor. You are, you are professional educators, and uh, it's been my privilege to be able to spend a lot of time uh, with professional educators like yourselves in various places, uh, not just in North America, but uh, Central America and South America and the Caribbean. Uh, it has been a real joy, and it's an honor for me to be able to be here and to, to be able to be part of your family. 
Many, many thanks to those of you that have uh, reached out. There are, there are many of you that, that have been very gracious. You've sent us cards. You've told me that you're praying for us. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. Uh, I'm very glad and honored to be able to be here. Let me read to you here from uh, Matthew chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but... How does it finish? On every word that proceedeth or comes from the mouth of God. A number of years ago, my oldest daughter and I, uh, she was about 10 years old when this took place, we went on an epic journey. My father had passed away, passed away in 2010, and uh, in his will, he had left me uh, five cars. And uh, some of these were race cars, others were not. Uh, I immediately disposed of, uh, of three of them and then uh, began to haul the rest across the country, uh, dropping one off for sale and, and taking care of various things. Uh, it was a trip filled with drama, and someday you'll hear the rest of the story. Uh, if, you, if you come to Pioneer, we'll, we'll talk about these things. I just want to tell you about one small piece, piece of the drama that took place. We had gotten as far as Ohio, and uh, I was limping pretty severely by this time, quite literally. I'll tell you that story another time. Uh, we, we started out early in the morning. We got a hotel, and we were headed, hopefully, close to home in Virginia. Uh, I was in my 1996 uh, Ford F-350 XLT 4x4 crew cab. That probably doesn't make anybody salivate here, but in the Shenandoah Valley, that was quite a thing, all right? <laughs> and I had a 31-foot uh, car hauler behind me uh, filled with, with all things automotive. And, and we left early in the morning, and we made one stop. Uh, my daughter's a real good traveler. Uh, Ten years old, she was the, the chief cook. The back seat was her domain. She had an ice chest and sandwich fixings and all this stuff, and she would sit back there and get everything ready for our meals on the road. Uh, we stopped at a gas station to fill up the truck. Now, uh, if you've ever had one of these big diesels, often they have twin tanks, right? And so uh, uh, both tanks were in need. One was not quite empty. I pulled up to the pump. Filled up the, the first about halfway, finished that, that, topped up that tank, filled up the next one completely, got on the road and headed out there. Now, this was a Sunday morning. Sunday morning in rural Ohio is quiet if you are early. Uh, you know, everybody's getting ready to go to church, and, and if you go before you know, 9 o'clock or something, the roads are pretty much yours, which is great when you're going on curvy roads and you've got a long rig and you, you want to just make, make time. So we head out there. We just get on the outskirts of town. When, when the truck begins to run terribly, I mean, just, you know, there's, there's no power to it, and, and just, you know, and I look in the rearview mirror, and there are, there are huge clouds of white smoke coming out the tailpipe. You know, mosquitoes are dying by the hundreds on the side there. They're just yeah, it's taking the oxygen out of the air, and, you know, I, I keep pushing on, on, the, on the pedal, and it's not, it's, you know, so I, I got to find a parking lot and pull over here. So I, I pull over into the parking lot. And I look under the hood, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm listening to the engine. I mean, it sounds a little strange, but I can't find anything terminal. I get back on the road, try to make it. I get maybe an eighth of a mile, and it's like, this is not going to work. There's hills between me and Virginia, and there's no way. I can barely make it on the flat. So I pull over into a parking lot, and I have this epiphany. What if the gas station switched pumps? I said, well, man, I, 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 you know, diesel handles are often green, you know, when you go there. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I thought to myself, I, thought, I know, I know I picked the green handle. Now, it had been a long trip, and I was not in the greatest of moods at this point. And I thought, I'm, I'm going to call this gas station, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to drill them. Did, did they make a mistake? Did they fill up? you know, a, a diesel underground tank with, with regular fuel, you know, because that, as I'm, I'm looking online, right, with my phone, this, this, is, this is what it could be. So I, I go through gas stations, and I can't really tell which is the right one because I didn't have the receipt with me and whatnot, so finally I get the right one. I said, are you the one that's across from such and such? Yes, yes, we are. 
I said, do you, do you have diesel pumps at your station? He said, yes, we do. It's out back. I said, well, that can't be true. Because I pulled in right to the side there of that station. And I reached, I, I grabbed the green handle and I stuck it and I filled it up. He said, sir, this is a BP station. Every handle is green. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> My mistake. Sorry. Hang on the phone. Well, I'm in a quandary now. I mean, what do you do? Uh, 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 you know, diesel, there's, there's all kinds of horror stories if you put regular gasoline into a diesel. Some say they, they run away and they explode, and, and, and mine was just fumigating. That's all it was doing. It had no power. And, and again, on a Sunday morning, trying to find a, a station that's open, uh, it, it was just impossible. Uh, I finally thought, aha, Dale lives nearby. Uh, Dale Twomley. I think some of you probably know Dale. Uh, very good friend, and I called him up, and he said, what's the story? I said, ah, I know just the guy. You know, he was a real pain when I had him in academy as a principal, but he's reformed now, and he has a diesel shop. Perfect. And long story short, he came and, and, and picked me up, towed me down, and got the tanks drained. And in only a matter of six or seven hours, uh, I was back on the road and uh, a little more educated about BP stations and fuel. <laughs> The fuel that you put in your tank makes an awful lot of difference, including the fuel that you put into your spiritual tank. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know, this book here is not the, the only word of God. You know, in fact, the word itself says, you know, the, the word of the Lord came to, right? There's other ways that God speaks to us. And at the same time, there's nothing that compares with this book. This is, this is the pinnacle. In fact, uh, you know, I, I mentioned in a sermon a few weeks ago, some of you may have been on vacation. So, some of the most dangerous people in the world are those who only pray but don't study their Bibles. Because sometimes we hear things that actually as a result of the late, light, late, late night lasagna that we had, you know, at one o'clock in the morning, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's from the Lord. This is our filter. This is our guide. This is our fuel. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I, we have, we have the privilege of working on, on, on a Christian campus. This is a great place to be when you, when you think about it. I mean, there's all kinds of good places out there, and there's many, many good places to work, quote, in the world, right? There's, there's, there's you know, places on the cutting edge of, of information and technology, and our, our discipline might be better represented in other places. All of those things are true. But here, we have the privilege of lifting up Jesus Christ. Here we have the privilege of, of doing great academic instruction and, and, best of all, to introduce people to Jesus Christ. You know, the, the number one goal of Adventist education is to establish students in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. That's number one on the list. There are many other things that are super important. You know, it, being spiritual is never an excuse to be stupid. Right? I, you, you've probably heard, no one here would ever say that. But I've heard that there are some educators who say, well, because our kids know Jesus, they don't have to know how to do the other stuff. And to which I say, no, no, no. The, the, the more you grow closer to God, the better you understand the high, high calling that we have. All of this is predicated, our success is predicated as a campus, as educators, for me as a preacher, all of us together, our success ultimately is predicated on the fuel that we put in our tank. And so just in the quietness of your own cranium, I, I would ask you to prayerfully consider, for you, what is that fuel? Is it success? Maybe it's friendships, perhaps a, 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 a career dream that you're in the process of fulfilling. What is it that gets you up in the morning that keeps you going in the afternoon and the evenings? You know, praise the Lord, the Lord has given us things like good friendships and career goals and aspirations. All of those things have their place. But ultimately, the fuel of the word is the one that lasts forever. Jesus died that we might live and that story is found here. So I just plead with you here at the beginning of the year. This is my plea for you. 
if you already have a time each day that you spend with God in this word, getting, getting fueled up for the day or for the week, whatever it is, if you already have one of those times, just let me pour gas on that fire. That's a great thing. Keep going. Don't let anything stand in the way. This is where you'll find the fuel that you need that isn't just going to blow white smoke out the tailpipe, but bring actual success and the completion of your journey. If you don't have a time, and some of you may be thinking, well, how could it possibly be in this group that there would be someone that doesn't have time with the Bible? <laughs> you know what? I, let me just talk for pastors for a moment. We're all okay. For pastors, one of our greatest privileges is that we get to spend time in the Word. For pastors, one of the greatest occupational hazards is that we get to spend time in the Word. We do it all the time to the extent that we think that we have it, that we think that we are receiving personal blessing because we have done a sermon or a talk or something like that. The fact of the matter is, is that you got to eat for yourself. you got to put the fuel in your tank, your tank. So if you don't have a time, if life is so full doing good things that you're missing the best thing, I would just plead with you to be brutal with your calendar. Make that time. Whatever it takes, let nothing stand between you and your time with God and with his word. Be brutal with it, because you and I both know that once, once the flag, once the green flag drops on this campus, all bets are off. We are running. We are moving. The Lord needs to be a huge part of that. He needs to be the guiding force. He needs to be the fuel. And if you don't have a time, please, please make one. You will go much further. You'll not kill, kill as many mosquitoes. And you will make it successfully to your destination. Not because I say so, but because Jesus himself said, we do not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let's pray together. Jesus, it is an honor and a privilege for us to say that we are part of your team here at Andrews University. Lord, the challenge before us, uh, well, it's just about to begin. We're, we're in the thick of it now. The, the real thick is on its way. They are driving this direction, Lord. I pray that as our students begin to arrive on campus, that indeed our tanks would be filled with the right fuel. Lord, I pray that, that whatever challenges there are with schedules, that indeed we would make the time so that when we fuel up each morning, it will be with your word, the fuel that can sustain us to your kingdom. Bless us in this way, for we ask it in your name. Amen. All right, so good to see so many wonderful people here today. And uh, one of the beautiful things about working at a university is uh, traditions are very hard in dying. They, they just keep going and going. And sometimes traditions get passed on from one person to the next, and the next person picks it up. So I think it's very well for me to say, welcome to another beautiful day in southwest Michigan. <laughs> Glad you're here. Would you take a minute? And some of you are sitting with people that you know, and some of you are sitting next to strangers. In either case, would you take a minute and just ask the person or persons beside you, hey, highlight of the summer. What was the highlight of the summer? All right, go ahead and take a minute to do that.
Were you going to do both things or just the story? It's up to you. I don't really have time to say about the other, but... Don't worry about it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to get to get to know your neighbor. Uh, based on how ready you all were, based on how ready you all were, eager to share, it's almost like you spent a lot of time today sitting in a classroom listening to other people talk. So you you just had to get it out. You just had to get it out. I'm going to invite my good friend here, uh, Byron, to come up and join me for just a second. So I don't know how many of you this has happened to, but uh, you know, you land in South, you, you, you get in Chicago, you get on the plane, and you're taking that flight from Chicago to South Bend, and suddenly you realize you're having impromptu uh, institute meeting on the plane because there's 20 of you <laughs> on that same flight. Well, this last week, Byron, you and I, and I think Elaine, and I don't think anybody else, I think it was the three of us, uh, if anybody else was there, they were hiding from us. Yep. Uh, we're, we're on a plane, and uh, you were sharing, you were somewhere this weekend. What were you this weekend? Yeah, so I'm kind of a big fan of type 2 fun. And type 2 fun is the type of fun that's miserable while you're doing it, but you look back on it as being fun. Uh, so my, uh, I have a good friend that lives in Colorado. He's doing a fellowship in pediatric surgery out there, and uh, he gets very little time off, 80-hour weeks, that sort of thing. But he had two days off last week, and he... he calls me last week and says, come out and climb some mountains with me. So we were out for two days last week and climbing uh, three 14ers, peaks over 14,000 feet in Colorado. So let's uh, show the first picture and you can maybe tell us. Why. So this is uh, near the top of the Crestone Needle in uh, southwest Colorado, or, yeah, southeast Colorado. And just to clarify, this is not photoshopped. This right? is not photoshopped, this is, no. This is real. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, next picture. There's me and my buddy at the top. You can see the, the technical only sign in the background there. And the next one, I think we did all. That's, that's from the bottom looking up at the peak. Was this before, uh, is this, this dawn or this dusk? This is before, yeah. This is dawn. This, this is, is prior to the pain, yeah. Wow, yeah, 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 it looks good. And then the last one. This is climbing up, so, and this is not photoshopped. It was, it was what's called a class four climb, so. Um, doesn't need a rope supposedly, but if you fall, you're dead kind of thing. So oh. it's uh, <laughs> so class four is also known something that Chap Jose will never do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. Now you were telling me that part of this adventure uh, is you, you hit four, but you you have a larger goal. Yeah. So there are 53 or 58, depending on how you count, peaks in Colorado that are fo over 14,000 feet. Uh, it's kind of one of my bucket list items to hit them all. So the, we hit 17 on this weekend, so up to 17 of them. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, we didn't do 17 this weekend. I'm up to 17 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be a feat. <laughs> I'm still impressed. 17 in one weekend or 17 up till now. What, what even mo where did that idea even come from that you want to do this? Where did that drive come from? Yeah. Well, as teenagers, some of you may know uh, Ralph Dracarton. He was the provost, uh, assistant provost here for a while. He took a bunch of his teenagers uh, to the Adirondack Mountains in um, upstate New York and took us on a horrible weekend. It was raining and snowing, and most of the people that went never climbed a mountain again. But a few of us seemed to like that sort of thing, and so we climbed all 46 of the peaks over 4,000 feet uh, out there, and it just kind of became a lifetime thing of uh, getting out and enjoying nature and testing ourselves against the mountains. And, and I'm taking it, I mean, that straight up, vert I mean, these are not all easy. I mean, this is not an easy event. Like, it takes effort and exactly. sweat and, like you said, some pain. Yeah. But when you, when you get to the top, and we saw some of those pictures at the top, yep. beautiful. It's all worth it. Yeah, worth it. Yeah. Now, do you stay at the top for a long time so that you can, you know, for every minute you climb? Not usually. Usually there's a thunderstorm coming in, so you got to escape oh. the lightning or something. <laughs> gets even more exciting. Exactly. Thank you so much, Byron, yeah, for sharing you. a little bit about <laughs> your sure. adventure this weekend. Let me hold let's, let's go back to the other verse. 
Uh, I was uh, inspired by uh, the story because it's not something I would ever imagine myself doing. Uh, but especially when he said that he set out to do this bucket list if they are going to hit all these peaks in Colorado. I mean, to plan your life around hitting these peaks and to invest the time and energy um, to be fit to do it. Um, it's, it's an ambitious, aspirational goal that you are satisfying as you go. So as I think about our passage, uh, a text, a focus this week right here, um, there's, a, there's a piece in there that really stands out to me. Joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and build itself up, builds itself up in love. I wonder how we as a community might be building each other up and strengthening the bond that we have. We do have a bond. We do have much in common. We share uh, not only in, in shared spaces. We have shared work. We have shared students. We have a lot of shared experiences. So how might we build each other up? OK, sorry. Yeah, there, there it goes again. Yeah. How might we build each other up and encourage each other with great sound? So I'm going to invite a few friends here. Uh, Richie, come on down. Uh, Richie, I'm going to have you. So I, oh, man, Darcy, I forgot. we got to do introductions. We shouldn't assume that everybody knows who everybody else is. I'm Jose Bourget, one of the chaplains here on the campus. And uh, Richie, who, tell us about you. Who are you? What do you do here? Uh, so, um, so, so, thank you. <laughs> Well, you guys are a lot more from this angle. Um, I work as the head of the gymnastics program here, the AU Gymnics, and I get to serve alongside uh, the athletic director, uh, Kevin Woolridge, as his assistant. Awesome. And so uh, any, do we have any former gymnics here? Because I know we, we got hey, one back there. Let's Sharon, go. I it's see good a couple. to see you. I'll raise my hand as well. There might be a few more. We'll just pretend there's 12 <laughs> dozen out come, there. Come by the gym. Yeah. Come by the gym. You too could be a gymnast still. So. Oh, wait. Let's do this. Hey, so tryouts. Oh, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Tryouts are coming soon. Yeah. So, Richie, I mean, your family, you all just, you're, do you want to introduce your wife? I mean, she's. Yes. My beloved wife, Jahaira. Jahaira Silia, she's sitting over there. Raise your hand, honey. Yes. Aww. Yes. That is my ride or die right there. So you all yeah. are relatively new to the Andrews family. You've been here, what is it, just now, about a year? Just a year. Just this is the year. end of our first uh, year here at Andrews University. Oh, that's great. Can you think of a moment or experience where you said, wow, this is special? I can think of many moments. You know, and, and uh, one of the things that my wife and I and my children, we have two boys, one who, who just had his first day as a junior at AA and one who's about to be an eighth grader at Rip Murdoch. Um, you know, we pray, we say, may we come to a community that is a community that shows love, like love for real. Um, and uh, I can think of a couple different times when that has happened with where you guys have shown us that as a family in a very short time. Uh, I can tell you from the very beginning, even, even moving here, the weekend I was moving here, Jose, um, we were stressing because we did not know how. Um, we, I, I was driving my car from across the country, uh, yet my wife and kids were, were flying here, and uh, we didn't know how they were going to get from the Chicago airport to here. And then I'm told, oh, someone's going to come get you. So uh, someone who wasn't even my friend yet, mm. Jose, <laughs> said, I'll go get him. You know, and, and you went and you, 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 you picked up my family without even knowing them and brought him here. And that to me meant the world. Mm. Uh, there are multiple I, occasions like that. I didn't pay him to tell her. <laughs> I had no idea. There was not a lot of pre-screening on the storytelling. Okay. I figure you'd say that, so I thought of other, other times, yeah. you know. Um, I, I thought of Francie Fainer doing the same thing, just bringing them food uh, while we were uh, in transition of where, where, do, where are we going to live, you know. And here is the VP of Student Life doing that. Or I thought of uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Donald, I forget the last name, honey. What is it? 
Bentley. Yes, if you're here, you know. My son got a job as uh, one of the kids that works the grounds here. And he says, that gentleman always stops and says hello to make sure, you know, we're doing all right. And, and, and that kind of kindness is just amazing. Kevin Woolridge, my boss, I was like, you know, I have this armoire that I'm going to have to find some people to help me move to the second floor of my house. He goes, let me, let me go see that armoire. So I, I take him over there, and he says, all right, Richie, let's go, you know? <laughs> and it helps me push this up to the attic floor, second floor. And I, little things like that become big things, Jose. Yeah. Last week, last week, my son comes home real excited. He's into the a Junior Cardinal soccer, soccer program. And he had stayed afterwards for a couple of minutes playing and kicking the soccer ball out in the field. It was super hot. It was one of those days. And he says, I was there with a couple of friends. And uh, he says, Papi, a random lady came, saw us, left, and came back with a bunch of water. Mm. And he, he says, and she just gave it to us. He says, here, have some water. Mm. And I don't know if you're, if you're that random lady who's here, but thank you. Because you made a positive, positive impact in my son's life that moment with something that simple. Hey, Amen. Thank you so much, Richie. And thank you, everyone, for pouring into Richie. And just we remember when people bless us, don't we? We remember when people bless us. I'm going to invite my other friend, Anthony, to come up. Now, Anthony's one of those uh, faculty person that kind of hides out in his department the entire day. We never get to enjoy or see. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's we right. get to see each yeah. other often. That's right. Anthony, introduce yourself, what you do here. Yeah, I'm Anthony Bosman, mathematics department. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> numbers! Yeah, love numbers. Great logic. <laughs> and you've been here now for six, six, six years. Six yeah. years. Awesome. Can you think of a moment or two when? Yes, yeah, so I was just trying to signal to you, don't call me up, oh. because it was a very similar story that oh. I was thinking of, but wow. I'll, I'll tell it again, because I think we have uh, a lot of these stories, each one of us, yeah. of ways that coworkers become family, right? Mm. And mine was last year at Faculty Institute. You and I had co-planned a breakout session, yeah. and a couple days before, start feeling fatigue, test myself, COVID. And so it was all on you at that point. So <laughs> thanks for taking that over. But I was knocked out. And I had planned to be here and engaged and do all these things. And I was just thinking of this today. And when I was home, Anaris stops by. Is Anaris here? So if you know, Anaris is very busy during Faculty Institute. She is running between every room and you know, making sure everything's happening. But she stops by with a whole box full of food. Mm. And then the next day, some of my coworkers from the math department Mm. Stop by with more food. And so a couple days in a row, another person, another person, another person is stopping by. And I don't even know how they knew, right? It's like this word got out that I was sick with COVID. That's why I wasn't around. But day after day after day. And I had experiences like that before, but it was really that weekend where it's, I'm not just showing up to work, mm. right? These are family. These are people that I belong in community with. Mm -hmm. it, it's this picture right here, right, of growing together up in love, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. I'm Nadies. I'm going to have COVID next week. <laughs> um, share the love. Share the love. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. I think we have one more. Christina, could you join me? You know, Pastor Taylor, when I grew up, we called this testimonials testimonies, right? So, Christina, would you introduce yourself, please? Oh, there's a lot of people here. Hi, everyone. Um, so, I'm Christina. I'm the Dean for Graduate Residence Life and Associate Dean for Student Life. Wonderful. And you also get to work with uh, the Graduate Student Association? Yes, yes. Yes, our Graduate Student Association. So, I get the privilege of being able to sponsor them, and that is a lot of work, but a lot of fun work. Amen, amen. And you've been here now for three years? Four, four, four years. years. This will be my fifth school year going into. Oh, wow. Good. 
So you experienced a little pre-COVID life and now the post-COVID life. Yes, I literally came in and then within several months we had a shutdown and had to be at the forefront with our student life team trying to figure out what life looks like during COVID for students who live on campus. Yeah, and, and you're one of these uh, unique employees that uh, has a story about what you were like when you were a student. And if I'm not mistaken, weren't you, were you the choir director for Deliverance or I was. The choir director? I was. So any of you, if you need a special music at church, I think Christina is <laughs> making herself available. Is that right? Yes. Amen. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to say no. So as you're thinking about your time here, is there a moment or two that stands out where someone blessed you? Oh, absolutely. There's been a lot of a lot of moments. Um, one of the biggest things that stands out for me is when someone asks you how you're doing and not just wanting to get the I'm great. And then they keep on going. But I've had a few colleagues that actually stop and say, no, how are you actually doing? And that in and of itself has created safe space for people like you and me who are caring for others on a regular basis to finally feel comfortable to be cared for. And I've been able to experience that and be able to, well, let me tell you what's actually going on. So, okay, my kids are doing this and the dorm, oh my gosh, the dorm and budgets and budgets and budgets. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but being able to feel safe enough to be able to do that, I've had the experience and opportunity of, of getting that and feeling cared for, and especially by the colleagues and the amazing people that I work with in student life who have come to my office and actually asked and care, and they care about my kids, and they care about my husband, and they care about just what it means to live mm. in this time and are doing life with me that I've been able to experience. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, yeah. Christina. I'll share one just because I saw him and I thought, oh, yeah, that's really good. Every time I run into this person, they sincerely, genuinely are curious about how I'm doing. And then it's followed by some word of encouragement, uh, a warm embrace and a hug that I kind of some days I'm walking across and saying, man, I hope I just run into this guy today because I could use that kind of love. Uh, Dan Johnson Every time I see him, always encouraging, always a good smile, always a good testimony. Well, I hadn't asked Dan beforehand, but Dan, did you want to share a moment? Well, when I, when I first met Jose. Oh, boy. It's not always a good start. I graduated with my, graduated with my daughter at GLA. So when I came to Andrews, he was one of the first people I knew here. Mm. And uh, he's always encouraging to me, too. Um, us guys at Plant Service, we get torn in a lot of different directions. And I can't think of anybody here that doesn't encourage us when we do a job. Mm. And I want to say we appreciate that. So, good word, Dan. Good word. <laughs> so, there is something that we can do to strengthen each other, to strengthen our bond. Um, there's another slide, uh, Rodney, if you don't mind. Um, one of the things that we came together as a community a while ago and established is sharing the heart of God and thinking about. Uh, different kinds of values and virtues. They're right here. Uh, if you go to the Campus Center, you're seeing them on the walls. Um, if you go to the President's page, he wrote a statement on this a few weeks ago about how important and vital, vital it is for us to share God's heart with each other. And I want to just encourage each one of us. I mean, I'm sure that if you sit there and think about it for a while, somebody in this room, somebody on this campus at just the right time said something, shared something, did something, and it just did all, made, it, made up all the difference in the world in that moment for them to connect with you. Thank you for being ready to be that kind of Christian. Let's lean into each other and strengthen one another.
Thank you. Thank you, Chaplain Bourget, Pastor Shane, and all of you who shared your story over the last few minutes. And I think that those are just examples of many stories that we could share today. Stories of connections, stories of people right here that have made a difference in our lives. And so today, dear colleagues of Andrews University, it's a special honor to share with you the annual State of the University Address. I have actually written it down because I wanted to think about it and be able to talk with you about it. And so today, this afternoon, as we gather as an academic community of faith and commitment, we are reminded of the words of Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 that says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Andrews University's journey has been one of soaring amidst challenges, of running with purpose, and of walking hand in hand, guided by our shared vision and our shared faith. In a world filled with uncertainty and rapid change, our commitment to our mission and our core values remains unwavering. Our Seventh-day Adventist principles of whole person development, of biblical faith, and a commitment to service have guided us through the storms providing us with a firm anchor amid the surging tides. It is in times of challenge that our faith shines brightest. As we draw strength from our beliefs and from the faithfulness of God, within a community of believers who stand together United in mission. First, I want to acknowledge and express my appreciation to those who have served and led this institution over these past three decades. We salute Dr. Niels Eric Andreasen a visionary leader who over a span of 22 transformative years forged the bedrock upon which Andrews University triumphs stand. Dr. Andreasen's unwavering devotion to Andrews University charted a course for growth and development. His legacy continues to reverberate in the ongoing journey of Andrews University. I also want to extend a heartfelt tribute to Dr. Andrea Luxton, our esteemed past president of Andrews University. Her exceptional leadership and unwavering commitment during her seven-year tenure have etched an indelible mark, fostering 
a culture of excellence, innovation, and unity. Dr. Luxton's approach and personal engagement have ignited inspiration among faculty, staff, and students alike, steering Andrews University toward extraordinary milestones. Dr. Luxton's deep affinity for the power of story was evidence in her response to various moments of crisis and in her dynamic stewardship of Andrews University, from her role as provost to her tenure as president, she skillfully harnessed the strength of sharing compelling stories. These stories consistently reflected her resolute optimism, even amid trying circumstances. Dr. Luxton's emphasis on community also forged an environment where individuals from diverse backgrounds found opportunities to thrive. Under her visionary leadership, Andrews University has flourished, enriching the lives of all who are a part of this vibrant community. President Emeritus Andrea Luxton is with us today. And we wish to honor you. Thank you. I also wish to extend heartfelt gratitude to each of you, our esteemed faculty. Your tireless devotion to academic excellence is not merely a duty, but a profound calling. Your creative teaching methods and the sanctuaries of learning that you provide for your students are infused with a higher purpose, one that resonates with our spiritual core. In the tapestry of our educational journey, you are the weavers, threadling the shuttle of wisdom and guiding it through the fabric of our student lives. Your unwavering dedication to research, scholarship, and creative exploration echoes the divine call for us to seek knowledge and understanding. Through tireless endeavors, your endeavors, Andrews University has emerged and will continue to serve as a beacon of intellectual discovery, a testament to the unity of faith and knowledge. As mentors and torch bearers of truth, your influence extends far beyond the walls of the classrooms. You have nurtured more than minds. You have formed character. Your guidance, rooted in faith, has empowered our students to embrace their roles as future leaders and advocates of change. Equipped with both deep knowledge and a spiritual compass. These students are poised to be truly world changers who will make a positive impact. With hearts 
full of appreciation, we honor the sacred role that you play in the unfolding story of Andrews University. Right now, I would like to ask Kara Batiste Harris to join me for a few moments. Now, Mrs. Harris is an assistant professor of journalism and communication in the Department of Visual Art, Communication, and Design. She joined Andrews University on July 1. That makes two of us. <laughs> for the past eight years, Kara has been responsible for managing and preparing content for daily news and advance feature stories at Newsday in New York. So Kara, share with us a, a reason why you decided to serve at Andrews University. Oh, well, thank you for the opportunity to share. Uh, I, I would say one of the reasons is because I knew that the opportunity was bigger than me. Um, yeah, I knew that it was bigger than me. I had been asking God for a challenge. Um, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> um, at work, you know, I enjoy being an editor. I enjoy working in the newsroom, but I felt like there was something more to do. And um, when I got the call from Dan asking if I'd be interested, initially I was like, no, <laughs> um, because being a professor seemed to, it seemed beyond me. And I was like, that's not what I do. I'm an editor. Um, but when I took a step back and I asked God to remove fear from the equation, because honestly, I was just afraid. And I said, Lord, is this something that you would want me to do? Like, what could I do here? And over time, he revealed that he had a place for me here, that there was a purpose that I could serve. And mm -hmm. I began to see how all of my experiences, my education, my work background, they all converged to, to prepare me for this specific mm -hmm. opportunity. And that's when I knew that this was a God opportunity, so. Amen, yeah. amen. That's beautiful, Kara. Maybe one more question. Sure. What's something that you look forward to sharing with your students? Something that I look forward to sharing with them is that I want to encourage them to develop, or if they, have, if they don't know, to discover or to develop their strengths, their God-given talents, and to know that as they pursue that, as they go out into the world, um, that it's okay to be excellent in their careers as well as to be faithful to God, that you don't have to compromise or neglect one thing for the other, that God will always make a way for your gifts. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, Kara um, represents the faculty who have joined us here at Andrews University since the last date of the university address. I would like to invite all faculty members who have joined us in the past 12 months to stand for a moment. We welcome you. <laughs> Thank you, and we welcome you to Andrews University. This is your home. In our Andrews University journey, I would like to highlight a constellation of stars whose brilliance often shines quietly but powerfully. It is with special gratitude that I turn the spotlight today toward our cherished staff. Daily, you are the silent yet powerful architects 
of our success. In the symphony of our university, you are the harmonious notes that support the melody of learning. Behind the scenes, your tireless efforts bring to life the grand orchestration that has allowed and will inspire our institution to flourish. You, the often unsung heroes, embody the essence of service, ensuring that every note of the Andrews University Symphony is executed with precision and care. With every email answered, every facility maintained, every encouraging word shared in a moment of need, you embody the soul of Andrews University. Your professionalism and unwavering commitment mirror the steadfast spirit of our institution, and your dedication forms the very foundation upon which our dreams and aspirations take shape. I would like to invite Mr. Kevin Wilson to join me for just a few moments. Now, Mr. Wilson joined Andrews University, I believe, in September of last year and serves as the digital and social media coordinator. He holds a BA in theology, also an MDiv, and for five years served as the youth pastor of the Oceanside Seventh-day Adventist Church. He's also been dubbed the CEO of Chai by Bon Appetit magazine <laughs> for the impact of his TikTok videos. So Kevin, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, share with us, why did you join Andrews? So when I was 18 years old, uh, I got the green card to the United States through the lottery. I mean, it was actually a thing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so uh, I went from not knowing what I was supposed to do in high school to packing up everything that I owned in two suitcases and a backpack and coming to the United States. Uh, first time away from home, first time away from family. Mm. And I knew that I wanted to pursue higher education, specifically through Andrews University, because uh, for us, for me as a Sri Lankan kid growing up in the Middle East, Andrews was the Harvard of Adventist education. And so I remember growing up, uh, every week we would watch uh, PMC, we would see stream mm. PMC, and Pastor Dwight would be there, and, and uh, we would eat together as a family, and I would tell my, my dad, and one day it'll be really cool to have some money and go to the United States and uh, take a picture next to the globe, take that picture, print it out, get Pastor Dwight to sign that picture, and, uh, and then and frame it and put it in the, in the house. Uh, <laughs> so, but... So I came to Andrews in 2009 uh, and graduated 2014 with my undergrad, mm -hmm. uh, MDiv in 2017. Got a chance to not only take a picture with Pastor Dwight, but work with him. And, uh, and then I know when I graduated, I just told God, I said, God, if you were to open up an opportunity to serve uh, at, at Andrews, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be willing to mm -hmm. take, that, take that position. So Andrews contacted me about a year ago, and it just worked out. Uh, they had to really dig the bottom of the barrel, and so we're here, and uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so, so now, be... Kevin, tell us, as you look kind of yeah. to the future here at Andrews, what's something that you would like to do or see happen? Uh, this is, for me, this is very personal. So for, for my wife and I, uh, community is not measured with, by the number of people we know, but the number of cups of chai that we share. It's a number of dirty dishes in the sink. Uh, that's, that's community for us. And so my hope 
personally and for my wife and I is to get to know as many people as possible, but to also uh, share uh, the gift that is this tea. Then, but also, for those of you who are already nervous, uh, there are certainly decaf options for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin represents the staff who have joined our family since one year ago. And so I'd like to invite the staff who are with us today who have joined us over the past 12 months to stand. Thank you, and welcome to Andrews. I also would like to express a special appreciation to our provost, Dr. Kristen Arthur, our CFO, VP Chip Mikma, who along with the rest of our valued leadership team work wholeheartedly each day to promote excellence, and growth to fulfill God's purpose for this place. And today, we take the opportunity not only to honor the members of our Andrews University family, but also to come with a thankful heart before our God, who guides us each step of the journey. Proverbs 2.6 reminds us, for it's the Lord who gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. A strength of Andrews University is that it is one of the most ethnically and culturally diverse international universities in the nation, and within Adventist education, higher education, globally. In fact, Andrews University is a place where you meet the world. Our mission of forming world changers can best be accomplished when we deeply respect and value differences in background and perspective, and support cross-culture interaction and encourage intercultural understanding and engagement to which we are committed. Together, our Andrews University family is a mosaic of diverse talents. Each of you adds your own hues to the masterpiece. The blending of these individual strokes creates a harmonious portrait that captures the heart and soul of our shared mission. Your resilience, even in the face of challenges, testifies to the unwavering love you hold for Andrews University, a devotion that portrays the very essence of loyalty and faith. At Andrews University, we are not insulated from challenges. All signs, for example, point to the fact that we are approaching a demographic cliff in terms of potential student enrollment with the, the pool of people born 16 to 18 years ago is markedly smaller than in previous years. While there are some indicators that this drop may not be as precipitous among the Seventh-day Adventist population of prospective university students, it nevertheless represents a call to creative strategy to maintain and grow our student enrollment and for each of us to make an invitation, the invitation, to Andrews University warm 
engaging and effective. We are also in a time where society, parents as well as prospective young people, are increasingly questioning the value of a college degree. While we certainly want each program to offer a good return on investment, ROI, we also need to ensure that we convey to our constituency and prospective students that a degree from Andrews University not only prepares students, our graduates, to make a living, but even more importantly, to make a life, a meaningful, purposeful life that fulfills God's calling. Students, particularly incoming students who have experienced isolation during the global pandemic, are now showing the impact of that pandemic in high levels of loneliness, anxiety, and depression. In fact, when we look back some years from now, we may identify this current group of students as the loneliest generation. While we have in place special support for students and will continue to strengthen these dedicated service at Andrews University, caring well for our students involves all of us. Be vigilant. Reach out. Create community. And refer individuals to specialized support whenever needed. Another challenge is generative AI, exemplified by ChatGPT, among others. This is not a revolution against which we should fight, but rather a tool that we should understand and appropriately leverage. In teaching our students, it may mean identifying alternative forms of authentic assessment. It may also mean teaching them how to craft a better query and how to critique the result, assessing its integrity and potential bias. It may also mean that in our own professional endeavors, we should learn how to incorporate AI to help each one of us carry out our work in a way that's more efficient and effective. Well, these are just a few examples of the many challenges to be faced. By God's grace, difficulties do not mean impossibilities. In every challenge, there is also opportunity. And we aim to maximize those opportunities. Over the past 12 months, despite the challenges, there have been significant attainments. I would like to highlight just a few examples of the many remarkable accomplishments across Andrews University. Just last week, for example, the School of Business Administration and the College of Professions received notice from the International Accrediting Council for Business Education of the reaccreditation through 2030 of all its business programs. <laughs> Enrollment in the School of Leadership in the College of Education and International Services is approaching 300 graduate students. New cohorts of the leadership program are opening in Brazil for the South American Division and in Serbia for the Trans-European Division. The School of Leadership has signed an MOU to provide leadership for the Barna Corporation. 
and the College of Education International Services has now signed MOUs to provide teacher training to the Lake, Atlantic, Columbia, and Canadian unions and the Oregon and Washington conferences. In the College of Health and Human Services, the college has recently developed online programs in the areas of healthcare administration and occupational therapy for working healthcare professionals worldwide. This past week, Dr. Padma Upala, Associate Dean for Research and Creative Scholarship, and her team received notice of continued funding in the amount of $449,000 from the U.S. Department of Education for Title III activities, which will continue to make a difference in the lives of many of our students. And last week, the Accreditation Council for Education and Nutrition and Dietetics reaccredited our dietetics program through 2030. In September of last year, the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary received a $5 million grant from Lilly Endowment to establish the Andrews Center for Community Change. This center speaks to the heart of Andrews University's commitment to make world changers. Just before the pandemic, during the 2019-2020 school year, 15 students from Andrews University went out to serve as student missionaries. This year, this year, we have more than 30 students serving as dental assistants, medical assistants, task force deans, teachers of PE, math, science, music, in Micronesia and the Marshall Islands, Chad, Chile, Brazil, Honduras, Dominican Republic, Bolivia, and here in the USA. Wherever we have opportunity, let us encourage our students to engage in service whether in short mission trips, volunteering, or giving a semester or a year for mission. Those service commitments often start on annual change day, which takes place this year on September 14. It may be the first time that many of our incoming students have ever volunteered, and we want them to discover that service is a joyful and enriching experience. So I would like to invite each of you to also reserve on your calendars Thursday, September 14, so that together with our students, we can experience the rich blessings that God provides when we serve others. A few weeks ago, our university invested $748,000 to provide a pay increase going forward this fiscal year. A modest increase that many of you will have seen on your second paycheck in July. Although if you were hired in the few months before, you may have already come in under that as starting salary. I want to assure you that Andrews University administration is committed to finding ways to regularly provide appropriate wage increases for our employees. In addition, we want to ensure that our compensation models that include salary, benefits, and other forms of compensation 
are appropriate within the context of denominational employment trends and our financial strength. Well, our first focus when we come to Andrews University is to accomplish the mission that God has given us. It has been some years since our compensation model and approach have been reviewed. For this reason, I've requested our Human Resources Department and our Vice President for Financial Administration to conduct a formal review of our compensation model, including its categories and benchmarks. We'll be working on this over the next few months, and we will keep you posted on developments. This introduces us to some initiatives that we will focus on over this next year, of which I would like to mention just several. First of all, strategic plan implementation. A top priority is to come together for the implementation of the Andrews University strategic plan that carries us through 2025. This plan, the result of careful thought and deliberation across the campus, and voted by our Board of Trustees includes three core storylines. First, we will grow by increasing access for more students to engage in a world-changing education. Second, we will deepen and sharpen our community culture and sense of belonging to further enrich our world-changing experience and commitment. And third, we will intentionally increase our resilience, especially our financial resilience, to be able to bring rich and innovative planning to our future. Now, each of these storylines incorporates specific action plans to which each area of the university contributes. We'll be working closely with the Associate Provost for Learning Effectiveness and Accreditation, Dr. Neris Corianavia, who will have oversight of the strategic plan implementation reporting process in anthology as we move forward. A strategic plan, though, is also dynamic. And over the next few months, we will be working together to update and fine tune our plan to fit ever more closely the future that we desire. Connected with this process, we will have periodic town hall meetings to keep you informed of developments and for you to dialogue with us. Second, anniversary celebration. I am happy to highlight the approach of the sesquicentennial of the founding of our institution. Throughout the next school year, we will be celebrating 150 years of heritage and mission. As you may know, next year also marks the 150-year anniversary of J. N. Andrews, our namesake, setting forth as the first official missionary of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We would like for each of you to consider how we may meaningfully celebrate this anniversary milestone throughout 2024. As you have ideas, please share those with Dr. Uh, Dean Paulette Johnston and Dr. Uh, Monique Pittman, who are co-chairing the Andrews University Sesquicentennial Committee. You can also send your ideas to the email address 150 at andrews.edu, <laughs> 150 at andrews.edu. We need all the great ideas that we can think of to celebrate this milestone. 
There will also be a capital campaign linked to this wonderful opportunity of our 150-year celebration. VP for University Advancement, Dr. Donald Bedney, will be working with individuals and entities across our campus to prepare the strategy and goals of this campaign. Once it is in place, we'll share it with you, and each one of you will have opportunity to become its ambassadors. Number three, uplift our spiritual priority. At Andrews University, we continue to seek a campus ethos where our spiritual commitment is ascendant. Chaplain Jose Bourget and the entire chaplaincy team, Pastor Shane Anderson and the pioneer pastoral team, our VP for Student Life, Dr. Frances Fainer and her team, our fellowship and small group leaders and our administration are all working closely together to build up a community of faith that is in love with Jesus and His Word. In the next few months, and with the participation of each of these individuals and entities on campus, along with many of you, we will develop for implementation an updated and vibrant spiritual master plan for Adventists for Andrews University, one that encompasses not only our students, but also each one of our faculty and staff. As part of this process, we'll be conducting a diagnostic assessment, reaching out to many of you for ideas of what we should do and how it should best be carried out. In the meantime, I believe there is a powerful way to affirm our spiritual priority. In harmony with what Pastor Shane shared with us, I would like to invite you to make a special time in each of our areas where you and your colleagues gather regularly for worship. COVID disrupted this meaningful spiritual practice in many ways but it's time for us to take it up again. Amen. In my office, for example, we meet at 8, eight o'clock each morning for devotional time as we start our day. In the administration wing, we meet each Wednesday at 8.30 for a time of worship. In turn, I would like each of us in our respective areas to make regular times to meet together with God. Beginning on Monday, September 18, we will begin a regular staff worship each week at 8.30 in the morning at the Youth Chapel at Pioneer where for 15 to 20 minutes, we will have the opportunity to gather together as colleagues, to reflect on God's Word, to pray together and encourage one another. As faculty and staff, we each have a role to foster the spiritual life in our community and to see our students as God sees them, valued candidates of heaven. Amen. So let's lean into our spiritual identity, nurturing faithfulness and excellence with all our heart and strength and mind. And finally, number four, leadership leaves footprints. I believe that one important aspect of administration is to get up from the desk, move beyond the committee rooms, and become personally acquainted with the unique challenges and opportunities of each 
area of the university. I have therefore reserved two hours each Wednesday afternoon to walk the campus and visit different areas. One hour a specific academic area and the other hour a specific service area. The, and, and by the way, these are not surprise visits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my office will let you know at least a couple of days in advance <laughs> that they will take place. Uh, and at times, I'll be joined with one or more of my colleagues. The purpose of the visits is so we can converse together, so that we can become better acquainted, and for me and my colleagues to have a first-hand understanding of your area. These visits will begin right away as soon as the school year has started. In addition, I just wanted to mention that while my wife Miriam and I will be dining in the cafeteria at least once each week with the goal of becoming acquainted with our students. And I would like to invite you to also seek out moments of interaction with our students. All of us, regardless of our role here at Andrews, are truly educators. And we educate for eternity. So let's get out and leave some footprints. In closing, the state of Andrews University is not just a matter of academic prowess or institutional progress. It is instead ultimately a state of spiritual unity, collective purpose, and unwavering hope. As we look to the future of Andrews University, let's remember that our spiritual values are not confined within these walls. Our values extend to every corner of the world, influencing the way we engage with our church, society, the environment, and each other. Let us remain steadfast in our commitment to nurture minds, inspire hearts, and transform lives, guided by the light of our faith and the wisdom of our Creator. May our actions and endeavors always be a true reflection of the love and compassion that our faith calls us to embody. May our journey ahead be consistently marked by a deepening of our faith, a strengthening of our unity, and a resolute commitment to fulfill our mission as a Seventh-day Adventist university. Thank you. And may God continue to bless Andrews University and each one of you who are a part of this remarkable journey. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Appreciate uh, your message this afternoon. Um, before we leave, we do have a picnic over in Johnson Gym, thanks to the wonderful rain that fell earlier today. Um,
but we'd love to see everyone there. And before that, let's bless, for the, let's bless the food. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to get us all together and to discuss the university before we start the year. Thank you, Lord, for new leadership, both uh, with Pastor Anderson at, at Pioneer and Dr. Taylor here. Thank you also for our past leadership, for the, blessed, for, the, for the vision that they had to take us to where we are today. Lord, as we get ready to eat and share just a little bit of social time together with our families and friends at, at, over in the gym, we just ask, Lord, for your blessings on the food and blessings on our new school year, Lord, and our students that are about to arrive. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Amen.